unit two, we're going to revisit some of the stuff that we did last semester in macro, but we're going to have to approach it in a different way this time because our focus is going to be different. Macro, more global approach, micro, much smaller scale. So we did supply and demand before. We talked about the determinants of supply and demand. All of that stuff is exactly the same. But we're going to start playing with some other issues, and that's going to be a little bit different here. For example, when we talked about consumer demand last semester, we started with the chart looking at the quantity demanded at each price, and then we graphed it, and demand slowed down and all that good stuff. But we need to figure out a different way to put these pieces together. So what we're going to start with this time around is called an indifference map. Okay? An indifference map is just a collection of indifference curves. So to set this up, you need your two axes with two different goods. We're talking about for an individual consumer. That's what I buy. I don't know. All right. So let's say, for example, that you have a consumer who would love to spend 100% of his or her income on either CDs or books. But if they could have unlimited quantities of the two, then let's say they would be equally satisfied with a lot of CDs and a few books, or a lot of books and a few CDs. Okay. Now, that line is called an indifference curve. We'll just label it number one, because that's our starting point. Now, to be indifferent means that you don't care. So to be on one indifference curve says, I don't care if I have this quantity of both, or if I have this combination of both, or I have this combination of both. I am equally satisfied. Now, how do we put equally satisfied in quantitative terms? This is where it gets a little bit interesting. Okay? If you are equally satisfied, then that means you have the same utility among all of the points that are on the same line. Utility being your level of satisfaction. Okay, how do we quantify satisfaction? Well, we can put that in utils, a util being a unit of how satisfied you are, which is probably pretty meaningless outside of this kind of a discussion. I don't actually think this word exists um, if you're not talking about economics. Anyhow, the indifference curve represents quantities in combination of two goods with which the consumer is equally satisfied. Now, would the consumer rather have more of both? Well, yeah, that's what the demand curve is pretty much telling you. Anyhow, so let's say that they would be equally satisfied with this point and this point on the same curve, or we're going to keep going out this point and this point on this curve, or this point and this point on this curve, okay? Now, your goal as a consumer is to achieve the maximum level of satisfaction possible. So you would rather be on a higher indifference curve. Your goal is to move out as far as you can. Now, this collection of indifference curves is the indifference map. That just means you have more than one graph together. Okay? So that's our indifference map. Now, how the heck do we get from, gee, I would be equally happy between this point and this point, but I'd rather be here, to the idea of a demand curve? Well, the next thing that we have to do here is add in a budget line. Okay, so let's say, for example, that a CD costs twice as much as a book, just, you know, for the purposes of putting this together. Your average CD probably costs as much as, you know, two of your cheap paperbacks. So let's say that the price of a book is, I'm going to say five bucks and ten bucks. 
this. Because that's what I spend on stuff. Of course, I buy most of my crap used, but that's because I am cheap. All right. And you're cheap because you teach economics. Well, yeah, maybe. All right. So let's say that we're starting with a price of $5 for books and $10 for CDs. And let's say that for this particular consumer, the disposable income is 100 bucks. So that means you can buy twice as many books as CDs. So let's say we go up. zero CDs. So for this blue line, income equals 100 bucks. Okay? And we're using all of it up here. Now, to figure out where you're hitting on the indifference map, we have to connect those two points in something vaguely resembling a straight line. Woohoo, look at that. Now, how do we know that that's touching a curve? Because technically, all this space in here is full of indifference curves, okay? So there isn't one exactly tangent to that line, so we can draw another one in right here. There is now. There is now. We'll just call him 1B because we had to squeeze him in there. Now, if we spend all of our money on one or the other, that's where we can end up. Wait a minute. Can't we buy all of these quantities under here? Well, sure we can. But if your goal is to achieve the maximum level of satisfaction possible, and you would rather have more quantity of both to be more happy, then what you're going to go with is the highest indifference curve possible where you can hit a tangent point. All right, so you want the highest curve you can hit and be tangent because any curve that you're crossing is a lower curve because that's how the graph is set up. Now that's with a set price. What happens if we change one of the prices? What happens, for example, if a CD only costs $8 or if we drop it down to $6? Okay. If a CD costs $6, and we have 100 bucks available, then we can buy... That's right, kids. You can probably do math in your heads better than we can. Been a long day. All right. So we go to 16. So that's going to bump us up here. And we're not changing the price of books right now, so that point's going to be the same. So now we're changing the slope of our budget line because we've changed one of the intercepts. So let's drop this guy down to here. Oh, wait. Now, suddenly, we can hit a much higher indifference curve right about here. So now we've got, when the price was 10 bucks, this is how many we're going to buy. When the price was six bucks, this is how many we're going to buy. When you put those two points on a demand curve, price and quantity, we had prices of six and we had 10. We had 10 bucks with a quantity of 10. Just guesstimate that right about here. Six bucks, we had a quantity of about 16. You connect those two points. Oh wait, it's a demand curve. That's how you go from the indifference map to the demand curve. Indifference map plus budget line, change the price, two points, connect them, demand, done. 